All right, welcome back, Histology. Today we're going to be talking about really what is the other part of the, the nervous system. In reality, uh, these are the special sense organs. Uh, we'll break it down into a few different ones here, just kind of showing you kind of the key things, some of which we have slides to take a look at, some of which we will not. But special sense organs are really these different things that are involved with one of the special senses. So when we think about sense organs, you can have what are called the general senses, which that's going to be kind of what a lot of times to be thought of as like your sense of touch. But in reality, sense of touch isn't just a single thing. I mean, if you think about your hand, there's just touch. And then there's pressure if you squeeze a little bit harder. But then there's also heat, cold, pain. Those are all different types of sensory receptors. So when we really think about general senses, it is a number of those different receptor subtypes. Uh, that are involved in that one. That being said, histologically, we're not going to get too deep into those. There'll be a couple things we might look at when we do the skin, but uh, outside of that, the histology on them is sometimes a little bit difficult to see. So we're really, we're really, what we are really going to take a look at is some of these special senses. Uh, I'm going to show you the first couple on this first show: the olfactory mucosa and uh, the, the taste buds. Uh, I don't believe we uh, haven't been able to find a good digital slide of the olfactory mucosa, so it's not something I'll probably expect you to do too much with on that one. But that being said, the taste buds are going to be the other thing that we'll be taking a look at. Uh, on the subsequent shows, we'll take a look at the eye and some of the basic structures of that, pretty involved in the eye. Uh, then we will also take a look at the ear and some of the structures that are involved with that, specifically what you can see down in the bottom of this one is really what we're talking about with the ear. Uh, it's called the organ of corti. So as I was kind of saying, senses are subdivided into those general senses. Those are the ones that are found throughout the body is the other thing on that one where special senses have a specialized organ that specifically does that one. So with taste, they're all found on the tongue or related tongue and oral cavity structures. Ear, all found in that inner ear part with the cochlea. Uh, sense of sight found only in the eye, sense of smell found in the nasal cavity. So those ones have those specialized organs that are present on them. So the sense of smell we would actually see if you were to look at the bottom part of the brain you have what's called and you can kind of see it in purple up on the top there. That is uh, part of the cranial nerve one. It is the olfactory bulb going to the base of the brain there and you actually have these little holes that are called olfactory foramina that the nerve endings of this kind of reach down through. Uh, these are long ciliated ones here. What they really are is they're chemoreceptors. Uh, you have a lot of mucus and other stuff in the nasal cavity. The chemicals that you are smelling are actually dissolving in that mucus and then it's these little what are really particularly they say cilia, but they're more like long villi, uh, microvilli, excuse me, that are going down into this, and they have little receptors, chemical receptors in those, and it's going to be chemicals binding to those chemoreceptors that are going to initiate some type of nerve impulse that goes to the brain, goes to the olfactory cortex, and is how you actually perceive a sense of smell. So you can see down on the bottom part of this here, you can see you have that olfactory epithelium and there's going to be little cilia on the surface. So this shows you a much better example of it right here. You can see the picture on the right there. You can see epithelial cells there with these kind of cilia which are actually more like long uh, microvilli that are going up into there. Uh, they're going to have some of what are called bipolar neurons that are moving this stuff along. Again. I'm probably not going to ask too much of this one. I might give you an image and just be, to me, this is be able to identify it as olfactory epithelium. Outside of that and the cilia on it, outside of those two things, I don't think I'm even asking you to do a drawing of this one, but that's about the depth I would go to if I had, was to ask you anything about this. And again, they call the molecules that bind this, those chemicals, they call them odorants. Uh, big surprise when it comes to taste, they call them tastants but they bind to receptor proteins on these large microvilli or cilia and it generates a nerve impulse that goes up to the brain and then your brain breaks down that information and you actually sense some type of odor. 
Uh, you have these basal stem cells that are always producing more of these olfactory receptors. Uh, sense of smell is something that's easily kind of damaged with being able to have that stuff. So these are some of the few neuron type of cells that actually are continuously being reproduced. And there has actually been uh, some studies with using some of these basal stem cells to help retarget spinal cord injuries. And you, they've actually had some success in having people get some connections back in the spinal cord using these nasal stem cells, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the other thing you have there is these supporting or sustentacular cells. These are pretty much helper cells of those basal stem cells. The other thing I want to kind of have you take a look at is going to be taste buds. These are found on the tongue and some of the oral cavity structures as well. Uh, they kind of look like, you can see them over on, on the left side here first, you can see the arrows are pointing at each of those little taste buds. To me they're kind of little onion shaped structures. You have these multiple layers going there and they have little ciliated cells that are going to the opening there where it says TP on the right side, that is that taste pore where you have these large microvilli, again, coming in there with chemoreceptors on there, and again, gonna bind to these chemicals and trigger some type of actual nerve impulse response that's gonna send it back to your gustatory cortex, and you're gonna perceive taste. Again, basal stem cells there, making new of these cells all the time. You have the cells that actually have the chemoreceptors, and then they're again gonna be sustentacular cells that are providing support. To me, I want you to be able to identify these as taste buds and maybe where the taste pore would be on, on those. I am not gonna have you on a test trying to differentiate the sustentacular versus the gustatory cells. But you can see in the picture up there the difference. The much darker nuclei in the one versus the other. Uh, these are found in papillae on the actual tongue. So the tongue has all these little bumps and ridges that are on it. If you really zoom in on it with these little cracks that are going in on each side of this image, those would be those crypts. And the taste buds are usually lining that. Uh, looking at some of the other digital slides, I found one that has some decent taste buds on it. None that have this level of, or number of them on there. But I would expect you to be able, like I said, look at this, know that you'd find the taste buds on the tongue, know that this is a papilla, be able to identify, if I was to do a drop and drag box, what is an actual taste bud. Uh, the taste buds, they have a number of different chemoreceptors. A lot of times they talk about five basic tastes. Uh, the more studies they do on this, the more they find that there is other receptor types. Uh, actually, they've had ones that for stuff that has gone bad, there's actually a separate type of taste molecule receptor for that. But a lot of times they talk about sour, salty, sweet, bitter, and what's called umami, which is more protein-based. Uh, MSG hits that. Uh, meats and other stuff would do that umami type of flavor. But again, what these are doing is you have, depending on the type of molecule, some of them, the actual molecule is an ion and it travels through. But one way or the other, the simple idea here is, is that these bind to some type of receptor, lead to some type of change in that receptor molecule, generate some type of nerve impulse that gets sent to the brain, and you perceive this as taste. So the next ones here, we will take a look at the optic senses on a separate show, and then the... Uh, Auditory, quartet, auditory processing in the ears on a, another one besides that. Till next time. So as I was kind of saying, we don't have a, I haven't been able to find in any of those digital slide boxes that gave you any good examples of olfactory epithelium. What I would say on that one is you can probably pull up uh, the image either from the PowerPoint, look at one in one of the online textbooks or your textbook, take a look at it there. Or like I said, you could probably search for an image of it online. I just can't find a digital slide to zoom in on. So those are the things I would say to look at for the olfactory epithelium. What I have here is actually an image of the tongue. You can see where I have the pointer right now, that would be a papilla, and this is the one that we're gonna zoom in on right here. It is gonna have the taste buds on the sides of it in these little crypts here and here.
So I think I've already centered it. It's going to zoom in on that so you can see there is that papilla. And what I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit more. We're going to go over to the side of it here. And what you can see on this one right here is you can see these two, and I always kind of say they look like little pearl onions, but this structure, this one right here, as well as this one right here would both be good examples of a taste bud. Neither of these are you get into the surface where you actually see the taste pour. Again, I would think if you can identify that these are on a papilla and that these are taste buds, those are really the main example, main things I would expect on that. Uh, if we go over to the other side, I remember there was one other taste bud on the other side of this. So you can see a third taste bud right there. Outside of these ones, I did not see any other great ones on other images that, at least within the University of Michigan digital slide boxes, that showed anything better than these ones. So again, be able to find these, be able to know that they are taste buds. If we can actually see the taste pour, that would be at the surface right here. But outside of that, that's kind of the level I would expect on these ones. We don't have to differentiate the sustentacular from the gustatory cells or anything else like that. Uh, we'll see you next time with the eye.